Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever it is, whatever time it is, wherever you might be. And much people are talking about how freaking cold it is where they are. Um, it's a little chilly here, but not too bad. Certainly not negative three or negative eight, as the comments are telling us. So anyway, this is the Wix online meeting. This might be a special one because this might be the last one we do where we're dealing with bugs that are uh, eight years and older. Um, and we might just be able to drop these all in the its entirety, which makes me very excited. So without any more talking, let's go do bugs, because it's time. So again, I want to start with the old bugs. So we're going to start down here, and we'll get to the newer bugs, which we're starting to get a few um, probably this Thursday when we do triage for the, the current stuff. So here we go. You ready, Bob? Yes, maybe? No? Uh, he's muted himself again. Sorry. Yes, I'm good. All right. It would be great if there was a custom task for validating user credentials. Do we have this? No, we had one for databases. And I agree. We should. This would be a great thing to have in the UI. Right? The additive could be done in 3x. Um. Yeah. Custom task is kind of funky. I think they mean a custom action in UI. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess I'd probably expand this. Because really, what it seems to be asking for is the custom action to validate and the UI to go along with it. Yeah, probably. I'm fine if you wanted to edit that in the comment. OK. Probably only useful if we add these other two things as well. Right. Right. Include standard bitmaps in Wix UI library. Come with no. red. Blue are widely used. Therefore, it includes standard blue color. No. This is actually, this is actually fixed, right? It, you know, no to including blue, um, fixed and to the fact that we can yeah. override. Yeah, this is probably back in the days when we couldn't figure out how to override this stuff. Right. right. Yes, but red has become an important part of the fact that Wix is different. Add target DOS name preprocessor. Target DOS name. Short name. Oh, short name. Really? I suppose. <laughs> uh, it's probably well, short. actually, I'm not sure what that means. I, I don't. Well, no, I guess you could you could do it. I don't know oh, what. Man, I don't know that. Oh, you know, know what? Any... This might actually be a more interesting back in the Wix 2.0 days when you needed a short name. I've never had anybody ever ask oh. for this again. Oh, sorry. I, well, I was assuming because they mentioned target name, I was assuming that it was referring to. Uh, the MS build uh, project reference variables. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, right. But that's back when you needed a short name. So, but anyway, uh, yeah, we could add this. I, could, I don't know. I call it target DOS name. I probably call it short file short. name, or short name. But yeah, yeah. But target DOS name. Wow. Anyway, yeah, that could be added. Convert dialog resource scripts to UI authoring. Sure. Sure. So I wanted to do that. Go edit in the C++ resource or editor and then bring it back to... Is that reasonable? It's possible. I mean, you know, it's just... I, I didn't file. ask that. It's all software, so it's always possible. Is yeah. it, I mean, is that something you can act... I mean, is it reasonable? Yeah. Will you get reasonable results? Yeah. I guess, I guess so. I guess so. Okay. I don't know how great it would be, but, you know... Totally doable within limits. Okay. Uh, That's right. Someone could implement it. I mean, it, it's not a horrible idea. It's not the way I would do it, but it's okay. Uh, registry security adjustments. To install adjust registry, grantful user permissions does this. Uh, this is, I think, a dead bug because they never came back. I don't think they understood that permission did exactly that. That works. Co oh, code dom. Are we doing anything in code dom? Um, we have like a dozen bugs on this. Um, I suggest we suspend them all. Yeah, let's suspend all of them. Because I don't. I mean, if someone wants to work on code dom, they can. But I don't know that there's. I, I'm doing bits and pieces in Wix four, but mostly just to make it work, <laughs> like in the new world as I touch it. But yeah, should we suspend them all in four? Because this is going to be massive code 
I, I think that's what we should do, right? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with suspending them to four because I probably wouldn't want I those kind of them. changes. But you don't want them in 3x because they're, there's, there are actually things that depend on them. And yeah, them it's too low level. It falls into that bucket of things that... Okay, and that's all of these things. And yeah, the code dump is, I mean, it was a neat idea. Honestly, it was an idea back in, you know, .NET Framework 1.1 1, 1 days when code dom was how you generate a code. I don't know if anybody right. does it. But there are more advanced ways of generating code and net effects that maybe that's what the code dom needs to become. But it's not an area I do a lot in. So we'll, we'll take all these code dom things. I assume these all came from like Derek or somebody. No? Property grid. <coughs> Oh, description attribute, category attribute. Okay, yeah. Children should return I collection. Yeah, see, it's not even I collection anymore. It's like I enumerable of a type, and then you get link to work. Right. Going through these elements should have a source file, handling multiple files. Dialogs could be defined in many. Yeah, interesting. So annotate them with where they came from. Mm -hmm. All right. Should be component. Should have the following. Oh, inheritance, maybe. Yeah, this guy wanted a lot of things. I think he was pushing the code on. This may have been the guy doing Wix edit. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I don't see anything that's... I, I don't know all of them make sense, but if we're suspending them all, then, yeah. Yeah, these are all things I suppose you would want to do in the code now. So, yes. Show SQL errors to users to see these three options. Goes, Ignore the errors, don't populate them on the screen. Raise errors, give error number and description. Raise errors and give error number description and ability to roll back, retry, ignore. First one is done. Okay, I think we could do that. I could kind of see that. And we probably could take it in 3x. I think it's additive. It's probably not terribly hard to do once you get into that code again. Agreed? You're fine with uh, that? All right. Yeah, so, sorry, I'm still... Uh, you're still trying to get through all those code non things? Well, yes, and I'm, I'm not, ignore all errors and don't pop, oh, I'm, okay, I'm sorry, he's asking for options. Yes, 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 these are options for handling this, and we do the first one. That, yeah, right, 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 and we've done the third one in other extensions. Yes, yes, we have done that in the past. So Got again, it. It's not a bad thing, we just haven't done it for SQL. Yeah. Um, where are we at? Four, four, eight. Four, four, eight. Got that. Inheritance secure objects. Yeah. This is the umpteenth time this has shown up. So, yeah, we probably should do that eventually. Agreed? Go do that to wherever it goes. Yeah. Vote if include create GUID macro. Uh, that's fine. Do we not have this somewhere else? And Visual Studio has it. Maybe it's not as... Macro. They want a macro. Oh, but macros are gone. Macros are gone, yeah. I think we have to punt this one. Well, I think... But I guess we could create like... something inside Votive that did it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably We would probably use an add-in if we did it inside Votive. Yes. Although, truthfully, well, yeah, okay. And there's already a good generating thing, but it's not as simple as, you know, well, you can't do control C plus control G. Yes. Control C I already copies, but yes. it would be interesting. It's possible. Yeah. Um, although hopefully less necessary these days, because really you shouldn't have yeah. that many goods in your setup anymore. I mean, that's honestly the direction we've been going, but right, right. right. Bug, whatever, man, size six when registry contains double quotes. When you use add registry, you 
you've already read as part of a path, the registry value contains double quotes and they're persisted and result in incorrect value. MSI returns failure 1631 as a result. I don't, uh, yeah, this is not useful without the original bug one, two, three, four. And we've lost that, right? Um, actually, you haven't. You can still, there's still redirects up. Um, oh, you just have to find them. If you can find the old URLs, SourceForge will redirect to their Fine. resty type. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm terribly. Should we? Do we want to keep this bug around? I, I would think we'd have bigger problems if we were containing double quotes, like in the last nine years, eight years. This is where Bob's like, no, we must verify every bug, and Rob's like, eh, if it hasn't been happening for a long time. <laughs> no, no, this is, I, I say that when there's an actual bug. Yeah. And a good bug report, as yeah. opposed to this thing. So, okay, let's, let's just obsolete it or something. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Includes in localization files. No. We have different ways of doing this. No. We, we talked about this before somewhere. Yeah. Knowledge of dependencies between components. Oh, yes. Yeah, so this, I remember something like this where <clears throat> um, essentially what they want is a bottoms up gra uh, grouping mechanism. So you can say this component is dependent on that component rather than creating a group and putting the two components together. And then somehow all of the components have to come in and get figured out what feature they go to and all this other kind of stuff. Um, it ends up creating this chain of components. It's a different way of doing component group. I think this has to be four. I don't think we could do this in three without doing some weird stuff to it. Well, this is also really similar to the thing we discussed last week or the week before about component at feature and component at component group. Yeah, except that this one actually flows the right direction. Um, right, because you have a component that points at another point. It, it's pointing, it could be viewed as pointing down the tree where a component pointing to its feature, a component pointing to its group points up the tree, which is where we have problems. Um, and when I say up the tree, I mean in, from the linker point of view, the way the linker walks the world. Um, this could almost be done. The problem is that you have to get complex references replicated from this component to all of the components that are dependencies on it. And then you get into those things where what if you have a component that's dependent on two other, or a, a component that is, has two components that are dependent on it, and it has to get complex references hooked to it, which I think is that's what he's saying with the whole primary feature being a problem. Um, okay. Sorry, this is this is deep linker stuff, and I appreciate I'm <laughs> the only person who ever bothers going linker. Um, well, I'm I'm no, that's not it. The problem is uh, I'm still trying to grasp what dependency could refer to another component or components or to a merge module what uh, I guess well okay so what, is, is I what thinking... he's saying what what, is, what it seems he's saying to me and I don't have your linker experience is that feature ref would or under feature you'd have like a component ref to like one component and it would then pull in all that components Marked dependencies. That's right, and I, I didn't. I skipped over the merge module part because that doesn't make any sense to me. But well, that's. Although, I, I was trying to figure out what the. Although it probably dependency would. had multiple targets. But I, even even just the simple case of component pointing to another component. Um, I don't. I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure out why you would do it this way rather than. 
Yeah, Why just do it instead of creating a group? Because you push the dependencies down to the lowest level. Right. So you don't you you base you don't have to create a component group. Uh, the component group could be used instead of dependencies, but the component group can also be used just for groupings. And so his his point is rather than creating a component group, why don't I just create dependencies between components, and then I don't need a component group at all in that case. Yeah, but are you going to be able to to accurately describe a component's dependencies by having a single pointer to another component? Well, he said list, but sure. He does say list. The it's list all... of components in your feature. No, I don't. I don't... Oh, okay, whatever. Um, I, I don't. I don't see the value in this, but so I'm. It, it, I it's a, like I said, it's another way of doing component groups. The interesting thing is, the funny thing about this, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, is this feature may actually make component at feature make sense. Because <laughs> if you pushed your feature down to your components and then you did the references between components, you could have one component pull in your tree. I, this, that's really weird, though. Because then your components would you pull one component in and have dependencies to however you know this gigantic tree potentially, and then all these components each have their feature and they all start flying to all their different features, which probably isn't what you wanted because you want to maintain the dependency tree, which has to be represented in the feature tree in some level in MSI. Otherwise, you get weird stuff. Yeah. I guess I, I'm I'm I don't see a lot of I I guess um, for me you usually have. Um, clouds of dependencies, not strict trees. So component groups make more sense. It's like, yes, you need all of these files to do anything useful. Right. Whereas, uh, I mean, you could do trees, but then you end up having, you know, this file has dependencies on these 12 files and so on and so forth. And I don't, I don't know. That, that, that seems... Uh, it seems to be moving away from from useful details about you know how your components have to be delivered together uh, to being a lot more about I don't know some kind of weird something I don't know it, it seems it seems it's trying to do a lot more than just be about about setup. So maybe that's interesting or useful, but whatever. Uh, yeah, just, we, I, I, I'm, I'm plus like, zero on this. I'm plus zero. I'm fine if this is a 4.0 feature. I just, it, it's hard for me to see that it's better because it's, it's it's like a spec. It's out of date as soon as you commit. So anyway, I'll shut up. Yeah, no, you're you're right, and I'm I'm just I'm struggling between the the value of this over component groups. This comes back it comes uh, it comes back to the discussion we had about about component feature and component component group. It's like, you know, you're you have this easy way of grouping things. You have a source file has component group and it has components in it. Yeah, Done. you know, nicely fragmented. Everything you know pulls together. Yeah. Uh, easily understood, also important. I wonder if this, yeah, I wonder if this is less important given the changes we've made to component group over the years. Adding component group ref underneath it, because I don't think that was there originally. Um, oh, being able to, okay. Being okay. able to nest the components in the component group. Right. It wasn't right. there in the original. Um, let's suspend this in four, and if I ever want to go dig it out, I'll, I, I'll do that. I, I'm just I'm going back through my my litany of problems I've seen and I've seen people trip up where they quit using component groups for dependencies and then you are stuck with these component groups and you no longer knew what was dependent on what and so when I was thinking about this dependency concept back then in these very large projects I was dealing with it was kind of the thought of well maybe I would add these dependency things as checks right so it would be an enforcement rule but it wouldn't actually cause everything to get pulled in. 
Oh, that's interesting. Um, but then I wasn't sure how valuable that is. And this is saying actually use it to pull things in. And so anyway, like I said, let's suspend it and I can go sit and think about it for a while. I can kind of see where they're coming from, but their use case, when I reread their use case, it's not really right. Because it really, they really are describing component groups in their use case, their initial use case. Anyway, it'd be nice to be able to set different configurations of VSNet, for example, specify output directory localization file. I think you can do this now, right? Like, this is what the whole properties page is about. Um, yeah, we support, it supports the... Okay, let's call this fixed. <laughs> like, specify output directory localization file. It's like, yeah, you can do that. I think that's fixed. This is 2005, of course. <laughs> right, was there a votive? Yeah, barely. Yes. yes, barely. I think that's probably part of the problem there. Yeah. Uh, decide whether you use an existing application pool rather than create a new one. <laughs> is this, yeah, we're back to uh, configuration versus installation. Yeah. And yeah. I think this does need to be done. The whole searching for an existing app pool, I don't think it does that today. Yeah. So yeah, that could be done in 3x. Sorry. That, or maybe it has to be. We'll see. Let's put it in 3x, and if someone starts working down that path, they may find that they have to break more of the world, and therefore it needs to move 4x, but we'll see. Okay. Um, Preprocessor to read any and write any. No. <laughs> no. No. Make a copy file easier oh, to use. Oh, I see. Um, yeah. What? No, we're not reading I and I files from. No, 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 no. I know, I know. It's no. just, I actually, I read the whole thing. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I saw the angle bracket read any. I'm like, nope. <laughs> angle bracket question mark read any. No. Don't do that. Um, code like this doesn't work. Directory copy file. Directory. I expected the copy file from that to that. I think this is this is supported now because it will inherit if I remember correctly. Oh man, Wix documentation, copy file element, and necessary in the component with no file ID must be our when this element is necessary in the component. Okay. Let's see where it is. I think this is fixed now. I think it will now default to the component directory if you don't specify one. Get the directory? Yeah. Good. Yes. When this Good. element is nested under a component element and the file ID is specified, as is in their case, the file is installed and is copied to the um, destination of the parent component. Perfect. So this is fixed. Okay. But, Assuming they don't want to be able to put copy file without a component. Like, if they want that, well, they're not going to get that. Yeah, they, that was an important part they could have not dropped, but yes. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, give this to me. Believe it or not, I actually found this code in our custom actions twice recently. So we could put this in 3x and... We can do this. I actually saw this when I was fitting the print EULA, and there was somewhere else that was doing it. Oh, we have code to do the find window? Thing. Yes. It's scary, but it's the only way I know to do it. 
It's not like MSI is going to start changing their handle class or their class now or whatever. So. You can give that to me and I'll take it in 3x and I will get it because I know where that code sits. And just extract it and re factor that code out. All right. If we weren't doing it already, I'd be a little more concerned about it, but because we're already doing it, we might as well just do it the right way and call it good. Oh, yeah, yeah. It appears the web filter CA is only support in relation to the website element. Most natural, less least hackish way to support this web service parent for a web filter. Wow. Um, uh, yeah, Jacob. No, I, I'm sorry. I need to. Uh, I'm, I'm working on the Wix website. I need to get that done ASAP, and then I'll be back to the self update thing. That's what I got sucked into. The immediate is taking, or the urgent is taking over the important right now. It's not making me happy, but it's what it is. Um, all right. Most natural, least hackish way to support this web service parent for the web filter. Oh, this is very IS specific stuff, I think. IS specific or IS six? So IS six or seven. I'm not sure. Maybe okay. you can still do web filters. I don't talk. I don't hear people talking about web filters and ISAPIs anymore. Yeah, uh, I would say we suspend this, and someone can go dig it out if they want it. Uh, okay. These changes are big enough that I. Hmm. Is it suspended for X, or do you think it's additive? I think it could be done additive. Okay. I could be wrong about that, but I think it could be done. Debug setups from VS.net, from Visual Studio, and project properties. Oh, they want a button in the context menu to go to that, and then do an F5 and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure. Someone could implement F5 in Votive. Sounds like an enormous amount of work, but you could totally do that, right? Um... I mean, it'd be kind of cool, you know, debug the whole MSI. Yeah. We've talked about it in the past. I mean, I remember in the early days when J-Rock used to talk about, oh, it should only take me, you know, like, you know, three weeks to get Votive up and running. <laughs> and then, you know, three months later, he's like, well, I almost got it working. We're like, wow, that sounds brutal. Um, it is. Trust me. <laughs> and so, you know, we had these ideas of being able to debug MSIs back in, gosh, what was that, 2004? Anyway, long time ago. So, yeah, it could be done if someone wanted to do all the work. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work, but yeah. Okay. I think it could be down in 3x, but honestly, I don't know. Include FTP deployment option. Physical files deployed to an FTP site. Uh, no. Install locally, then build a custom action to FTP the files to their destination. How? What would rollback? No. Uh. It's surprisingly, it's uh, it, well. It's in the same vein as a certain company that uh, supports LCMA compression uh, in their MSI, and they actually do it inside the MSI. Uh, they basically build the MSI as if it were all loose files, and then, um, yeah, uh, decompress. And I think it's an, a stream, an LZMA stream uh, from the MSI. Yeah, it was kind of interesting when I noticed that. But but this is FTPing your files to a server during the installation. So you install oh. it, and then you FTP the file somewhere else. Oh, sorry. I thought this was FTP source. This is FTP destination. Uh, suspend it, and this is this is spooky as all kinds of stuff. Well, yeah, but look who it came from. Yeah, well, um... yeah, I, I I read it as download, so did Derek, and um, but it, yeah, you're right. It's it's FTP as a target. So yeah. how about no? Yeah, no, all right. And also, this is a burn thing. If it was anything, so. And I think burn can do FT. Oh, maybe it can't. I don't remember. No, it can. It can. It can. If you yeah. give it FTP, it'll do it, right? 
I, yeah. Oh, crap. I think so. I think it does, but I could be wrong about that. It's anyway. HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, and bits. Yes, I think you can do FTP. Yeah. Um, really useful to be able to add new groups. Yeah, right. New user groups. We have at least three other bugs tracking this. Well, now there's one less. Yes. We'll dupe that. All right, 291, 291. 290. Oh, we're on the last page. All right. Are. We're going to make it. Yes. Need full name and description attributes on the user. Oh, you can't set that today? Well, you couldn't set it then. Gosh, this came from Lion Smith. That's a long time ago. And, uh, oh, yeah, you still can't set it. Okay. So. Yeah, it seems like reasonable things. Could be done in 3x. Should be additive. Ah, yes, script source access property. Uh, let's suspend this, I think. I, this is, as far as I know, a total 6 thing. Scary. Anyway, directory browsing property. This, I thought, was set. Their properties. Wow, maybe not. Wow. Wow. Nope, that's not supported today. I suppose you could want to set that. How did you run this in? Yeah, <laughs> just kind of surprised me that we don't do that one, but yeah. Hey, user creation, set logon privileges. This is another one of those setting all those privileges on the user account that we have a bunch of them open. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. Service config only on initial install. This is another one of those Yep. Yes, it is. Because sometimes I want to run it and sometimes I don't. Please intuit which is which. Although, it looks like the new service does have a way of doing that. The MSI does have a specified way to run this parent on reinstalled. Oh, the MSI 5 stuff? Yeah. It's interesting. That's interesting. Anyway, yep. On reinstall, really? It's very interesting. They made a number of short-sighted decisions when they did 5.0. It's like they forgot some of the primitives. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Um, tallow. Extract. Uh, sorry. Uh, I, this, that goes in our, sorry, service config only on initial install. I think that goes in our bucket of configuration stuff, right? If you uh, have to do that, but yeah. it's a general problem of when do we run config versus repair versus all those other things. I, yeah, I'm okay with treating it as a bucket problem. I just don't know what to do there yet. Um, this is, I suppose this is now heat. Yeah. And this is the whole out of proc and there are some that was started to do this and it hasn't been done. So yeah, we could do that. Be nice to capture this. Um, should we update it, or is there not already one tracking this for heat? I almost think there's something tracking this for heat. Uh, you know, I don't recall. All right, I well, that doesn't seem familiar. All right, well, maybe we could update the title in a little bit and make this guy say heat, and we could keep it. I expect it's additive. Um. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Support for Prog ID ref number 67. This is a very old bug. Our last bug. This bug is hard. Yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, this one's hard. Let's put this in four, four x, four x. I think four x. Because I don't, I'm pretty sure we can't do this in three x. The changes that's going to be necessary. It basically comes down to how registry rows are being generated, and this ends up creating a duplicate registry in two different components. And so you can't create your prog ID between these two classes. And prog ID ref is interesting, but it's not simple that simple, I don't think. So anyway, yeah, there's a whole lot to think about in that one. One of the nastier calm things. Properties in general are laid out extremely poorly in MSI, in Windows 4 MSI, or whatever. Um, so yeah, I think we have to put that in 4, and sit down and think for a while how to take it all apart and put it back together. Alternatively, you can do the non-pretty, just write the rich key yourself kind of thing. So, well, yeah, I imagine that's how it survived for eight years. Well, that's the workaround to not use the pretty things and do it by hand. Yeah. But yeah, something like that. That one's hard. All right. So if we do all that, that means we. Oh, I didn't look when we started. We had like 44 bugs when we started. We're down to 12. Um, let's go for our old bugs here that we can, since we have a little bit of time. This bug keeps coming back. Oh, because we keep waiting for more information, huh? Yeah. 3.8.11.14 works, but 3.11.28 doesn't? <sighs> wow. Yeah. What changed between those two? That's a week? I mean, well, calendar weeks, but... Yeah. And again, without, you know, doesn't. Oh, man. Not a great bug report. I don't know if this is another problem of, of you know, dev setup hanging or right. what. Um... Yeah, you know, I can add a comment to ping people. The the ping will go to anyone who's entered a comment, correct? Not yet. Soon. Ah. Okay. So does that mean we just have to keep this bug open until... Yeah. I don't want to do that. It's been a week since I added my comment. I thought it would ping the commenter, so... Um, Of course, I didn't even get a reply to my comment from November, so I don't know if the original comment is good or not. Um, I don't. I, I'm tempted to close it. Yeah, let's let's do that again and see if it comes back again. I, I don't know what else to do right now, and we need to go. We already have a bug tracking our best guess that this is not working as the whole. Visual Studio hanging thing. Although that wouldn't fix his bug in this case, right? He would just find out that it's not registering Visual Studio 2013 because we killed the process as it was running or that yeah, yeah. appeared hung. Yep. Um, here, what's happening? They're not getting, but doesn't. But doesn't. So what did it do? Did it install? It must have installed. Well, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't. <laughs> so it's not, not helpful. It's, it's really not. I don't want to make any assumptions. I mean, is it simply it didn't integrate? You know, no mode of integration? Or did it fail? Did it hang? You know, obviously there's like 20 different options here. And doesn't work is not clarifying. Yeah, we should. Let's just close this to say we should. For anybody else that comes along, we should have a discussion on this on Wix users with their log files, preferably, and then yes. we'll create bugs from whatever issues we find in the log files. A bug that says it doesn't work doesn't help us. We need something that 
is like, ah, Absolutely. from the log file, this is what went wrong. That's the bug that we need to fix. Right, right. All right. Uh, let's make this go away. Let's see if it comes back again. That works. All right. We're waiting for heat to show up again from all that. These I want to talk about next week. Is this true? Let's go to um, MSXML missing. Is this true? This is. Uh, it, it is true. Well, uh, at least at least in 3.8. Um, well, then it probably was true back in 3.6, 3.7. So, yeah, we should fix this in 3.9. Uh, this is probably part of that, the large, wait, it was there in 3.6. Uh, 3.7 had the nice build improvements, right? It might have yeah. got lost in the major build improvements accidentally. And, wow, a lot, I guess not a lot of people use MSMQ, huh? At least not from the binaries, .zip. Right, right. right. So it is in the MSI. So. It's in the MSI. Well, all right. Well, at least didn't completely blow it. All right. So, yeah, that should probably should be fixed in 3.9. Um, if you don't want it, you can give it to me, and I'll go just hack out a couple of these in the next couple of weeks. Shouldn't take too long to do that. Oh, yes, right. We have this rule that we keep breaking. What's that? Uh, that we don't assign something to a particular release unless it has an owner. Yes, that's why I didn't say 3x, I said 3.9 right. to me. So, uh, sorry. I didn't know we were breaking that. Uh, we have a couple. I'll 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 put it on my plate. All right. XML file and XML config both need support. Arbitrary XML namespaces. No support for anything except empty blank namespace and XML file and XML config. Oh well, that's probably not good. There's no way to specify a explicit namespace. Hmm. All right. Seems reasonable. Yep. If we can't specify namespaces, we should. So we could open that in 3x. Seems reasonable. Works for me. All right. So this one's interesting. Funky type. Oh, this is the one you were wondering if someone was going through and what the heck are they doing? Uh, odd changes um, that came in this morning. Code to implement all assigned to this person. Is this person on the call? Is this any of you guys? No? No? So, I was actually thinking about this problem in 4, and I have a thing change coming um, that I'm proposing in 4 that removes the cabs from <laughs> the Wix libs. Right. Well... <laughs> Which I think makes this less interesting. Um, actually, I think it makes it more interesting, just because I'm contrarian today. Um, it, it, the, the cab used in a binary Wixlib was not something that you could use to get the benefit, the perf, the perf benefit of what that this bug is is about. Yep. Um, so in a way, it doesn't matter that that you know you want to change how files in a binary Wixlib are stored because right. that's not, you know, that's not the key. The key thing is being able to have, a, to build a cab once that you can plop down into any MSI. I see. So, this doesn't have anything to do with Wixlibs then. Um, well, that's interesting. Um, I think that's probably the most common use case. Well, actually, the thing I'm finding is that most binary Wix libs that I'm hitting, as I've been, you know, doing my changes and testing them and looking at that kind of stuff, um, most of the time the binary Wix lib has many files, and only one or two of them are included in the final MSI. Well, and yeah, that's um, my comment addresses that. Um, it is a very narrow space, right? Yeah. Uh, you would end up needing essentially. Did I mention? No, I didn't. Um, uh, I, I thought about the same thing. It's like you obviously would want to build cabs. You, you would have to determine the, the the modularity of your Wix lib in advance. Right. Um, but as we were discussing earlier, you know, there are certainly cases where you can have a group that you know is, you know, a blob of dependencies rather than a, a nice graph and 
Yeah, there's your component group. There's your there's your cab. Yeah. Um, How said, narrow is this? <laughs> well, that, that, that's that's I think a very interesting question to think about before writing any code to do this. Uh, it might be really really narrow, um, and and not provide a lot of a lot of benefit. Um, Why wouldn't you just let cab cache take care of it for you? Like that that seems. It's well, like, the, it figured the, the out all the linking, it figured it all out, it just did it. it. It did it, but it does it every day, right? Every every daily build, it's, it's going to do it, right? So you want a way of checking in. You build once, you check it in, and you hope that that part doesn't change that often, so you just carry this cab around that's always the same. Um, well, it's this it's as same as the output. Right. I mean, if you're checking, well, obviously it depends on how you reuse it. Um, it's you know, if it's a think of Wix, right? Okay, we have a bunch of um, extensions. That have binary Wix libs built in, and once we RTM, we never we would never have to rebuild, um, you know, the cabs for say you know Wix CA or Server CA or Firewall CA. Um, but that I think is well, and actually, <laughs> sorry, I also bring that up. Um, probably that's not very interesting because you're going to end up with things in the binary table that aren't in cabs, so that's not very useful. That's right. Th those cases, those are a binary table, and they don't, I don't get a win. Yeah. yeah. This yeah, really has not. to be content. Like, this has to be pre-canned yep. content that doesn't change, and you get the cab done just right so that Wix can use it and reorder your MSI to make it all fit. Yep. It is very narrow. I, I would just be like, use cab cache. It's just so hard. Like, well, the problem with cab cache though is that it, it doesn't, it it doesn't work. It doesn't let you, um, it doesn't let you centralize the cost. Cab cache only works like in local scenarios once you've built it. So there's True. there's no. I mean the the an idea here is that. Your build machine can go ahead and rebuild. You know, it's going to rebuild the Wix lib, right, or the extension, and then everyone using or consuming that would get the benefit of this, you know, embedded magical cab. Um, cab cache doesn't do that. Cab cache, everyone has to build it at least once. And I agree, it doesn't make it doesn't make sense for probably anything in Wix. It really only makes sense for. Um, you know, for big content. Yeah, like, the only thing I can think of is if you're, like, this would be, like, a massive optimization for, like, a game. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you're right. That's that's the the big ticket scenario there. And I don't, I, I've not built a big enough game to fill it. The last game I did was, I mean, they're, uh, they're I think they're still fitting on a CD. Um, oh, how quaint. I'm just saying... Uh, it, yeah, I mean, I I, that, that, that's what they were. It wasn't a big deal, yeah. and this wasn't a problem. Yeah, um, it, it, it's a it's a significant problem when you're getting up into the you know two DVD range. Um, though the truth is, at that point, I wouldn't do binary Wix slips anyway. I I, I don't have a feel. For this, this use case that's feels stupid. a little too contrived to me thus far. Like, I mean, yes, I could see we could do this. I don't feel like I understand the user case well enough to do this. Um, yeah. Uh, well, it's also fair to say that there are better ways of dealing with the problem. Uh, I, I think because it's narrowed to content, 
so much, um, it's a lot less interesting. Um, primarily because your content, your content is, it's going to be easier to deliver it as a bundle anyway, and you're probably already delivering it as a bundle, especially if you're talking about 10 gigs worth of data. <laughs> yeah. um, and and that breaks down some of the other use cases, like yeah. in my head, Don't rebuild that localization, MSI. or um, uh, you know, so, something like that. The truth is, with the bundle, you could separate out the things that might cause you to want to rebuild a particular MSI. Um, you can just say, yeah, the big data MSI that is rebuilt by the build machine once a night, and you just pick it up. Yeah. Uh, and if you're building any of the data locally, cab cache will kick in. And you're only doing it because you're changing the data. You're one of the data folk. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sold on this feature. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's a very narrow case. Um, maybe it's more or less narrow. But I think without like an actual customer coming at us with a use case, I'm okay if we suspend this or... I, I vote no, especially with the binary wix. As this is, I vote no. Okay. Because it would have to be something different. It's, I don't think it's a wix lib. <laughs> and after and, and everything, I think it's, yeah, break it in MSI and put it in burn and call it good kind of thing, which is where you were at. Anyway, that's where I would go. Okay. I'm okay with it. Okay. Do you have anybody out there that wants to fight for this feature harder than, than that after listening to us babble on? Yeah, right there. John's getting good at this game. He's like, yeah, forget that. That's crazy. <laughs> um, sorry, one, Simus. Come out to Wix Devs and talk to us about it if you really thought you wanted to work on that feature. Um, XE package compressed default yes and remote payload child should be an error. Oh, so if the package is compressed and remote payload is set, it should be an error, which is probably true. The hardest part, as I oh, say... Oh, oh, no, things. really, not that error message. Oh, that error yeah. message is horrible. Isn't it? Yes, that's really bad. Um, I added my comments. Uh, the problem isn't just XE package compressed attribute. Um, it also depends on the bundle compressed attribute. Um, So it, it might not be something we can easily catch at compile time. Um, but obviously somewhere in the linker we can probably we can probably catch it. Uh, I, I like the idea of just saying we default it, we force it to uh, or there's no, that yes. And we, we document on remote payload and such that says, you know, you cannot have a compressed remote payload because that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I think that's probably the most straightforward way to take care of this. Okay. Well, since I suggested it, I'm in complete agreement. The only thing I'm debating is whether we should um, put a warning. If you don't say compressed equals no, if we throw a warning and say we well, did it for you. Yeah, well, I, I would say we should. Oh. Um, oh, actually, that's interesting. Um Again, the problem is that it's not just when um, XE package takes the default because essentially XE package the the compressed default value changes based on the bundle compressed. No, that, that's why I said that, I know that's why I said if you don't explicitly say no and you have a remote payload, we give you a warning and telling you that we are marking it no. Yeah, the only thing is that. Well, it'd be a new warning if. And if you want the warning to go away, explicitly mark it compressed, and it's all good, and then it's explicitly there. Because the default is the default is default. <laughs> wow. Um, and Thank you. That was useful. And so, it, it you know what we're overriding the default value for you based off this. That's all I'm saying. Based off the, the existence of this remote payload. And yeah. If you don't, and if you don't want the the warning, then be explicit about overriding the default, which is the 
one time when I say yes, put the attribute in when you want to change the default value. Well, or we can do it without the warning. The only problem is that when it happens and somebody doesn't realize it happens, they'll be like, what the yeah. heck just happened? And that's my the most straightforward way to say, you know, hey, you have remote payloads under this XE. It must be marked compressed equals no. We're doing that for you. Have a nice day. Yeah, oh, the error is certainly ugly. I'm just wondering if we can get away with fixing it in the compiler rather than in the linker. Um, well, we, I, 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 I think okay put this all it. in the compiler. All this is yeah, no, I, okay. I understand. I understand. I'm just, I'm just saying the, the idea that the compiler, the, the XE package compressed attributes default value because it essentially inherits from the bundle. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm mostly okay with the warning. I, I just, Basically, what it says is that if you use remote payload, you have to be explicit about your compressed state. Default yeah. is not allowed. Uh, try setting it to yes, and that'll error because you can't do that. So then you're just being silly. So then we're basically going to force you to no. <laughs> and then you're going to be like, well, why didn't you do that for me? And the answer is going to be, we did. We just gave you a warning telling you you did it. Because if you put this in a bundle, we could automatically figure out what the default case. I mean, we could go figure it out. But then when you picked up and moved to a fragment, suddenly this warning would come up, and you'd be like, why was there a warning now and not a warning before? Why do I now set this? And you'd be like, what the hell? And you'd be like, yeah, forget it. We're just going to put the warning all the time. And the only reason um, we give you a warning is because, well, you know, it's a little bit unusual that we force you to do this in this case when that happens. So we wanted to tell you, and a warning was our best way of telling you. We could spit out an info message, but seriously, who looks at those in the compiler? <laughs> like, we don't do that for anything in the compiler. So, no, um, it's, a most, it's it's fair, um, and I'm okay with it, mostly because this is not going to be user authoring so much. That's yeah. true, because almost always you use heat to generate this, right? Because, oh my gosh, trying to get all that data is too hard. For a remote payload, yeah. So it's either going to be generated by you or generated by us. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. Um, I will take that bug then. All right. I already have most of the fix. Now I'll add the warning. And let's do this last one. we got one minute here. Custom H result for full failed launch is mostly useless. Yeah, this is a good debate, the whole H result in the strings. Yeah. Nice to be able to search for it, but especially if the error message is kind of generic when it comes from the system, but uh, um, for failed launch conditions. Yeah, that's probably fair, right? Because then you could put a very nice H result, or a nice, <laughs> nice H result, a very nice error message. You control every little bit of that. The H result probably just gets in the way, huh? Yeah. And it's custom, right? So you can't go search for it. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah, that's probably that'll probably make people happy. I don't, I don't know that anybody will be upset that suddenly the number disappeared in three nine. Yeah. Oh no, we use that number in our documentation. That's probably what and like yes, put a good message in there, and the users probably won't even notice that the error hex number is gone. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we could do that, and you, I saw you already sent a pull request for this. So yes, I, I already did that's this what one. That is. So. I will assign that to myself and put it in 3.9, and as soon as you yes. accept the pull request, we're good. All right. So now, where am I at here? Hopefully, we're back down to the things to discuss. Why are these not gone, Bob? Seriously. Why because I'm going to put them back. I want that preprocessor thing. No, I'm kidding. I, I hope so. Kidding. You really scared me there for a second. <laughs> All right, cool. That will leave us six issues to discuss on Thursday. Yes, Thursday when we have the status meetings and we talk about the process for doing big features, which is what that is. And this one, I think we're just waiting for Heath to come back from uh, um, vacation and explain why this is a good thing to do, because it invalidates all the certificate checking we do today. Um, and with that note, I think we're done, um, which is fantastic. Like, I can't believe it actually happened. It's This is it, right? This is the end. We're we're done with bugs that are older than eight years old, mm -hmm. old. And every Thursday, we should be able to get down to zero, basically, on triage bugs. Yeah. Um, I don't know why yeah, we like would this. do that. Which means in the last year or something like that, we've processed, what was it, 790 bugs on triage bugs? Sounds about right. Yeah, it sounds about right. So that means, now, of course, if you go look at our uh, 3X open, 
there are now 400 and some bugs that you can go choose from. But at least we've triaged them and we don't think there should be no bugs in here that we're like, oh, definitely should not be doing that, yeah. which is a good move going forward. So we've at least looked at them all. And what about Forex untriaged? No, nothing in Forex untriaged. Oh, Forex untriaged, Forex open. There we go. That's what I expected. And 33 is for us to go look at um, in Forex. So if people are looking to do stuff in the future, this could be a thing to look at. And if they're looking to do stuff in a backwards compatible way, there's 400 some bugs to look at. And for this week, there will be, it looks like, four bugs for us to talk about, which will be fantastic. And this is going to start switching us, I think, more from bugs. Well, when we start talking about features, we'll start talking about implementation of features, because hopefully there are no features that come in here without people saying they would like to work on them. Well, I'm sure we'll still get people saying, you should do X for me, because I don't want to do any work for anybody else. But anyway, yay. Thank you for joining us, everyone, uh, especially John Cooper for being around for the whole last, what was it, three weeks or whatever, as we plowed through a bulk of these bugs and cleaned up our backlog. I'm actually very excited. This is this is good stuff. feels like we're in a clean place and we can move forward from here. So anyway, on that note, I wish you all a wonderful day, and I'll see you in a, in a couple. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.